After watching this video, you should be able to describe the electrocardiogram or ECG waves, segments, and intervals. And let's start with a standard ECG tracing, let's say from lead two. And we're going to start labeling the waves. So the first wave here is the P wave, which represents atrial myocyte depolarization. So that means the right atrium and left atrium, when they depolarize, shows up as this deflection here. Most of the time we see upright P wave deflection, but in some leads you might see biphasic P wave or even an inverted P wave, and that's normal. The P waves can look different depending on which lead you're looking at. I want you to also keep in mind that the atrial depolarization is what triggers the atrial muscle contraction. And so the P wave begins just a little bit before the beginning of the A wave when you're looking at atrial pressure changes during the cardiac cycle. Now the depolarization is going to spread through the AV node, the bundle of his and bundle branches, and we're going to have our next major waveform, which is the QRS complex. Keep in mind that the QRS complex represents spread of depolarization starting with the interventricular septum to the left and right ventricles, and the QRS complex here can be made up of different waves and look different in different leads. So the QRS nomenclature is very important when you're looking at different leads and you're trying to communicate what you're seeing. When you have an initial negative deflection for the QRS complex, that's called a Q wave. Positive deflections are called R waves, and negative deflections following the R wave are called S waves. If you have only a negative deflection, that's actually called a QS wave. And the sizes of the waves dictates whether or not you're going to use a lower or uppercase letter to describe the waveforms. The final important waveform is called the T wave, and it represents ventricle myocyte repolarization. I just want to point out that the T wave here has an asymmetric shape. That is, the peak is closer to the end of the wave than it is to the beginning. And the T waves generally are concordant with the QRS complexes. That is, if the QRS complex is generally a positive deflection, then the T waves generally are upright. If the QRS complexes are a negative deflection predominantly, then you typically see upside down T waves. That's not always true in all the leads, but that's a good rule of thumb to go by. Keep in mind also that the asymmetry of the normal T wave contrast with the symmetry of T waves that you see in certain abnormal conditions like myocardial infarction and hyperkalemia. Okay, now we're going to look at segments. Remember, segments are in between the waves and they're typically isoelectric. The PR segment is from the end of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. Remember, the beginning of the QRS complex, not the R wave. And it represents the spread of depolarization through the AV node, bundle of His, and bundle branches until we reach the interventricular septum. The next important segment is called the ST segment, and it's from the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the T wave. Normally, it's also isoelectric, although in some individuals it may slightly be a little positive or negative, usually no more than one millimeter or so. But in certain pathological conditions, such as myocardial infarction or ischemia, you get characteristic deviations of the ST segment, what we would call ST segment depression or ST segment elevation. And we'll discuss those in another video. Finally, we have the TP segment, which is at the end of the T wave and beginning of the P wave. And it also typically is isoelectric, although you may see following the T wave in some individuals a small rounded deflection called the U wave, which really has not much significance except that it's pretty prominent in certain conditions like hypokalemia. All right, now finally, we're going to do the intervals, and intervals are made up of waves and segments. So our first interval is going to be the PR interval. So we're going to start that right here at the beginning of the P wave and we're going to include the P wave and go all the way to the end of the PR segment. So that's called the PR interval. The next important interval is actually the width of the QRS complex and that's called the QRS interval and it represents the spread of depolarization through the ventricles. Then we have another interval and it starts at the beginning of the QRS complex or QRS interval. It includes the QRS interval, ST segment, 
and the T wave. So it ends at the end of the T wave, and we call this interval the QT interval. There's something interesting about the QT interval that we'll discuss in another video, but it's affected by the heart rate. So what you have to do is a rate correction for the QT interval called the QTC. Finally, we can look at the peak of one QRS complex to another. It represents the entire cardiac cycle from one spot to another. And this RR interval is very important in determining the heart rate. Understanding all of these different waves, segments, and intervals is critically important in understanding electrocardiography and making diagnoses of various types of abnormalities, as well as understanding the effects of drugs on the heart that could also affect some of these different parameters. And that concludes this video on ECG waves, segments, and intervals.